Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to provide an introduction to the all selected function. All selected is extremely useful whenever you want to obtain visual totals and perform calculations that take into account some of the external filters, uh, ignoring some of the local filters local to the current visual. Now, before we move further, a big warning that I say here, and I will probably repeat before the end of the video. All selected is a very complex function. The way it works is quite intricate, and we provided articles that describe into detail exactly how all selected work. If you want to use all selected, you need to obey one simple rule. That is, use all selected in a measure that is directly placed in the report. Never call a measure that internally uses all selected. The risk of doing that is that the numbers will be inaccurate, wrong, crazy, stupidly crazy, nearly impossible to understand. If you really need to use all selected in your reports, create measures that are placed uh, directly in the matrix or in the visual you're using, use the measure, but never call it, because otherwise the numbers are likely to be wrong. Now that I scared you enough, I hope, it's time to start using all selected. We will see a couple of examples. First of all, the reason why all selected is useful, and then uh, we see all selected both as a calculate modifier and as a table function by creating some interesting DAX code. Let's get started. We start with uh, this report that is slicing by brand and showing the sales amount. And we want to compute uh, a new measure that computes the percentage of the sales amount of the current brand against the grand total of uh, sales amount. The calculation is rather simple. I just need to divide the sales amount by the grand total of the sales amount. So we can start writing it. And we can create a sales percentage measure, sales percentage measure, that does a division of the sales amount. And then we use calculate to compute again the sales amount. And we want to get rid of the filter from the current brand. But because we do not know exactly uh, what uh, uh, is being placed on the, on the report, instead of using current brand, we can remove the filter from all the products. So I can do all product. If I compute the percentage as it is now, everything is working nicely. I can format it as a percentage then place it in the report, and everything is working nicely. I have 1 to 20%, 22%, 100%. .20%. I, I did all on product, it would have been the same if I did all product brand, because I have the brand here, and again, I still have the same result. It would be different if I used a different color, but all product brand works nicely here. What is the problem of using all product brand? Well, the user might use a slicer or other visual tools to select a subset of the products or a subset of the brands. And if that is the case, my all product brand or all product would get rid of any filter producing a percentage that is incorrect. Let me show you this. I already have a slicer and let's pretend that I select a set of random values for the brand. You see that the value for a datum is still 1.20%. If I don't have any selection, one a datum shows 1.20%. But if I select some of the values, the number does not change. And the reason is, at the denominator of my sales percentage, I'm computing the sales amount for all product brand. And this all removes not only the filter from the current visual, so the current a datum brand, but also the filter which is coming from the slicer. And by doing that, it retrieves all the brands and the percentage is always against the grand total. If I want to remove the filter from the current brand, this filter, but I want to keep filters coming from the outside, from slicer or visual that are outside of the current visual, instead of using all, I can use all selected. Look at the value for a datum is now showing 1 to 20% with a total of 36%. But 
but if I replace all with all selected, what happens is that the numbers are going to change as soon as I hit enter. And if I do that, you see that now it shows 3.33% and the grand total goes to 100%. And the number will change whenever I change my selection. So all selected restores the out of filter context on a column, on a table or on everything, on any uh, column in the data model. I can use all selected with a column, with a table or without arguments. All selected as a calculate modifier works just fine. And the calculate modifier is the most commonly used way of using all selected. But all selected can also be used as a table function and it returns the selected values of a column or the selected values of uh, a table. Its usage is uh, not so common because uh, uh, mostly you will use it as a calculate modifier, but sometimes uh, it is useful to get the list of the selected brands to perform some specific calculations. And I want to show you this with an example that is rather complex, uh, but interesting to create uh, step by step. What we want to do is uh, classify our brands uh, based on the margin percentage. So what I want to do is uh, compute uh, the maximum margin percentage, the minimum, maxim per ma the minimum margin percentage, and then divide uh, this range, divide this range between the minimum and the maximum into three different clusters. So I need to compute, first of all, the minimum margin, the maximum margin, and then split the values into three clusters to provide a category to each brand. Let me show you this with the demo. First of all, let me get rid of the sales percentage and replace it with the margin percentage. And I have a selection of brands. Now, if we look at the values, you see that the minimum margin percentage is here, 50.98%, whereas the maximum value is 57.87. Therefore, the range goes from 50% to 57%. Our measure needs to find the minimum value, the maximum value, then split into three clusters and compute the value. Let's do that step by step. First of all, we build the new measure. Uh, we call it brand class because at the end it will return the different cluster to which each brand belongs. And we need a variable first to store the minimum margin. Now, how do I find the minimum margin? I need to iterate over the visible brands and compute the margin percentage for each brand and then search for the minimum. That's a simple iteration, but I need a table containing the values of the brands that are visible in the current visual. So in order to compute it, I need to do mnx over all selected uh, product brand. All selected product brand will return a table containing a datum, contoso, litwer, and so on. And then I should compute the margin percentage. Let's check that it returns a correct value. So we return first the minimum margin. We place the visual in the report and it shows 0.51%. We can format it as a percentage. It shows 58.98%, which is the correct number. Then we need the maximum margin, which is a very simple variation. Instead of being the min margin, we call it max margin. And instead of using min x, we use max x. Let's return the max margin just to see again that it computes a correct number and that shows 57.87%. Then we need to compute the range between those two values. We actually want to compute it, to divide it already by three, so we can compute a step, which is uh, the max margin, max margin minus the minimum margin divided by three, because we will want three steps. Let's check the value of the step to check that it's a good number. Now we format it as a Per, as a general, so to see the value. Now let's format it as a decimal number. Okay, 0 0.02, which is uh, the difference between 787, 58 uh, divided by 3. 
And finally, it's time to compute the current value of the margin, which is just the margin percentage that should return just the current value of the margin. 0.58, that's 58%. And finally, we compute the cluster. Now it's just a matter of creating a switch. So we can compute now the result using a switch over true. And we check if the current margin is less or equal. The minimum margin plus uh, the value of the step, that means uh, it's uh, in the low class. Otherwise, otherwise uh, if uh, it is less than the minimum margin plus the step times 2, let me write step times 1, uh, that will be a medium class. If it is larger than the minimum margin plus the step by 2, then it's, uh, let's call it, top class. And now we can compute, return directly the result. <clears throat> and you see that we have our clustering that works. It says that 56.7... Uh, let me move this a bit lower so we can see both the code and the result. The brand class of class of 57 is top class, top class, medium class, top class again, low class, top class. So we had to use all selected product brand in order to compute the table containing the values that are, were visible of the brand in order to perform this kind of clustering. As you have seen, all selected is useful whenever you want to compute visual total. So you want to compute the total of the current visual and perform calculation on top of that. Sometimes you want to just compute the grand total, sometimes you need a table containing the values that are visible of a specific column, and then you use all selected as a table function. Before leaving the topic, let me repeat the big warning. All selected is much more complex than what I have shown you. Indeed, in order to perform its operation, it relies on shadow filter context or on specific group by filters when using inside summary columns, and uh, its semantics is really, really complex. There is only one scenario where you can use all selected safely without having to worry about all the details about all selected. That is, when you use all selected as a, a, a modifier or as a table function in a simple way, in a measure that is used directly inside the report. As soon as you call a measure that uses all selected internally, if you change something in the filter context or if anything happens to the columns that all selected is using uh, in the measures that happen to be before all selected is called, then the numbers are likely to be wrong. Wrong in a way that is nearly impossible to understand. It goes well beyond human capabilities of understanding the values. The semantics is still clear but it's impossible to understand, so I prefer to just say that the numbers are wrong. Learn to use all selected, test it on your model, and use it in a simple way. If you really want to understand all the secrets of all selected, we do have articles at SQL BI that goes much deeper in understanding all the details. If you are really brave enough, go there, read them, but be prepared for a very complex article and a very complex topic. If you like to live a simpler life, just use all selected following the simple rule that I gave you and you will obtain visual totals in a simple way. Enjoy DAX!